on the Hawkeye Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast, brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy, Atlantic Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Buffalo Wild Wings, Iowa's Corn Farmers, Quick Star, Green State Credit Union, and by Extreme from Mediacom. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. The Big Ten Conference postponed its football season this past week, along with other fall sports calendars due to ongoing health and safety concerns related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Conference Commissioner Kevin Warren said the decision was based on a number of factors, relying on the medical advice and counsel of the Big Ten Task Force for Emerging Infectious Diseases and the Big Ten Sports Medicine Committee. While the league will now study the possibility of a spring football season, the Iowa Athletic Department faces a $70 million shortfall. Hawkeye Athletic Director Gary Barta and head coach Kirk Ferentz join us next on Fight for Iowa. More Fight for Iowa after this. Despite living in uncertain times, Iowa's corn farmers remain optimistic that their now-planted crop will grow to feed livestock, fuel your vehicle with ethanol, and be part of over 4,000 products that you use every day. The Iowa corn farmer plays a vital role in our state, and we are proud to call Iowa home. You might think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Athletico Physical Therapy remains open to safely provide physical and occupational therapy treatment options in clinic and online during COVID-19. Delaying treatment could mean additional expenses and prolonged pain. Visit athletico.com. Request an appointment in clinic or virtually through a secure online video chat via FaceTime or Zoom and start feeling better tomorrow. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Iowa Athletic Director Gary Barta faced athletes and coaches of fall sports this past week in the aftermath of the Big Ten postponing their seasons due to the coronavirus. Barta could see and feel the devastation of those affected and admitted it took him back to a dark day in mid-March. You know, we were all in Indianapolis with men's basketball, and twice I met with uh, those guys and looked in their eyes and first said, you know, the, the w- there was a delay in the tournament. And then ultimately not only was the big 10 tournament canceled, but the NCAA tournament was canceled. So that brought back horror memories looking into those guys' eyes. And, uh, and I did it all over again yesterday and, and, uh, you know, justifiably. So they were, they were angry. They were hurt. They, you know, they want to know how could this possibly, because they want to play. And, um, and, and we want to play, I want to play. And, and so uh, they were, they were devastated and I feel for them. You know, you, you opened up with our, our mantra, our slogan, you know, fight for Iowa. Um, you know, we've been fighting for Iowa to be able to play sports going back to the spring and getting ready for it. And the student athletes have been here all summer and, and training, and we have these great medical protocols in place, but um, at the end of the day, uh, the, 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 just all the uncertainty around testing around, uh, you know, how is the heart or not, how is the heart or is the heart not affected by this? Um, and, and everything in between medically, it just, um, obviously the big 10 made the decision to shut it down. So, uh, sorry, I rambled there a little bit, but it, it was tough. I met with, um, all the fall sports, uh, in person, except for cross country. They, they were still scattered around, but, uh, that was tough. It sounds, and, and uh, by all means, uh, ramble on. I mean, this is uh, hard to deal with. Nobody's ever had to to deal with this other than a hundred and what two years ago. But it doesn't sound like any one component uh, swung the needle on the meter to that negative reading, uh, because you know I'm hearing a lot. Well, you know, between the release of the schedule to the full postponement of the season, we're only talking about a week's time. So it wasn't anything that jumped off the page here in the last few days, was it? No, it wasn't. Um, you know, I, I think as we got closer to uh, actual hard contact practice, uh, you know, the, the fall sports that were ready to go, obviously football was just getting ready to go into their full all out contact, uh, basically their fall camp. You know, we had been lifting all summer. We had been doing drills. 
but we'd been able to wear masks and we you know, hadn't, hadn't had any contact. Uh, but as we got closer and closer to the contact, there was still a lot of uh, concerns about the testing, not, not so much at Iowa. Again, I, we have the gold standard at Iowa. I, I can't thank our hospital enough, our doctors, our trainers, uh, our protocol at Iowa uh, was was really solid, and so I'm not so sure it was going to work or not. But I know if it was going to work anywhere, it was going to work here because of the great medical care that we had. But you know, for example, we would take a test. Our test is FDA approved. We had secured enough tests from our hospital so that we were we were really ready for the entire year uh, with all of our student athletes coming back. But a lot of the Big Ten. There was inconsistency in the types of tests they were able to get. And some of them, you know, would take too much time to get the results where we were getting results uh, inside of 24 hours, a lot of times in less than 12 hours. So uh, that was certainly a concern. Uh, the question of, of testing for inflamed heart, um, you know, again, our doctors were on it. They were, um, they, they would not let a student athlete back on that field or that court or that, uh, that whatever that situation was until uh, they were cleared. But there was, there was concern and inconsistency with, um, you know, how that was being uh, managed and handled or how it could be handled across the Big Ten. So not one thing, Dolph, but I think as we were getting right on the, right on the verge of starting contact, the other thing is contact tracing. Mm -hmm. So one person gets infected, which is going to happen. I mean, it. Sure. You know, we're, we've never said we can avoid anybody from getting the disease, but if one person gets contacted, and you've been imagine you're an offensive lineman, and you've been going head to head with the defensive lineman, and you're pulling, and you're you're you know you're 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 going down to the gap to your right and the gap to your left. By the time practice is over, you've been in close contact with a lot of people. Yeah. And it would just take one. Um, one of those, one of those uh, student athletes to to get a positive, and it would shut down, you know, probably a dozen people. That's just on the field. Let alone who do you room with, and you know what what was your trail? Uh, you know, did you go for? You know, did you go get a hamburger? Did you? So again, just lots and lots of things at once. And um, uh, when the Big Ten presidents got together. Uh, they they just voted that there was just there just was too much there too much uncertainty the medical community um, was always going to be in charge and they just were sending them information that um, that the presidents weren't comfortable going forward with. Gary, the classes are about to start. You've got thousands of students coming back to Iowa City. As, as for the athletes, uh, yeah, their season's been shut down. Their schedule anyway. Are they allowed to to continue to practice and strength and condition and work out and? have meetings with the coaches and film sessions or, or don't you know anything uh, or don't you know enough about that? No, it was really important over the weekend is when everything was happening. Uh, the presidents were talking on Friday and Saturday and Sunday, and we were, the ADs were meeting several times each of those days. And um, once we started to get word that this was going to happen, it was really important as I met with those teams uh, yesterday to tell them that, um, you know, we, we, for their mental and physical health, uh, we are going to make sure that they're still able to come in and, and do strength and conditioning, meet with their coaches, uh, do whatever medical approved drills uh, we, can, we can do. Again, we're comfortable with our medical protocol here. And so we're going to keep our medical protocol in place. You have to get tested. You have to get screened every day. Uh, if you do test positive, we, we, uh, we pull out anybody that's been in close contact with you. So uh, yes, we're still going to have our facilities open, um, and and as much for the physical and mental well-being of the of the students to just keep keep active and keep participating in the sport that they love. Unfortunately, right now they just they can't get ready for a game on Saturday or a game you know in soccer or field hockey in the middle of the week or volleyball. So um, right now that's the plan, and and uh, we'll we'll keep that plan in place until we figure something else out. And I don't want to forget about the community. Uh, we feel for the hotel and restaurant workers, uh, the owners, obviously the franchisees, the concession stand workers to the ticket takers that, you know, uh, we, we hope that uh, there is a spring schedule or a spring, a spring season, but it's, uh, it's, uh, these tentacles are far reaching, aren't they? The impact uh, is, is devastating. I mean, it, I don't, I, I, you know, I'm a glass half full person. 
Mm -hmm. I think you know that. I think a lot of the, our fans know that. Um, this one's going to take a while. We'll, we'll, we're going to come out of it. We are going to get through it, but it's going to take a while. Our, our loss in the athletic department, we will, we will lose. Immediately yesterday, we lost over a hundred and some million dollars in revenue. And even after some cuts that we made earlier and more cuts we're going to make, uh, our deficit this year uh, will, will come in around $70 million. And we're going to have to, I've been working with the campus and we're going to have to get a bridge loan to get through that. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll get through it and we'll pay it back. You know, once we get started again, we'll have a plan to pay it back uh, in a relatively short period of time. And, uh, but, but you're right. Our fans, I just, you know, the, the number one group that I'm concerned about is our student athletes. I'm, I'm worried about our staff and our coaches who have been just working hard to make this work. Uh, but immediately I go to our fans, you know, we had, um, we had been kind of holding out, uh, you know, for a long time, we, we wanted to have 50% of the stadium or as many as we would be allowed to get in. And then recently, um, you know, based on current, current rules and CDC and, um, you know, we, we, we figured the most we could get in was 10 to 15,000, but we wanted to get that group in. Mm -hmm. and spread that out so fans could go to a few games. Maybe some of them couldn't go to all games. But, um, you know, I know our fans, uh, you know, they, they love the Hawkeyes just, you know, and, and it, this is going to hurt them. And then you hit the nail on the head in our community, just all the, the businesses that were already, you know, we've been reeling since March. And, um, and this is just going to add, add to that challenge. But um, at the end of the day, um, we're, we're all going to have to figure out how to move forward. College football funds roughly 80% of schools' athletic budgets. Plenty of uncertainty remains regarding additional cuts. Barta and his team will resume studying that process immediately. Next, you'll hear the thoughts of Iowa football coach Kirk Ferentz on Fight for Iowa. More Fight for Iowa after this. The dining rooms in all Buffalo Wild Wings in Iowa are now open. To ensure your safety, all high touch point areas will be cleaned with increased frequency. Tables have been repositioned to allow for a minimum of six feet of separation. And all menus, cutlery, and cups are now single use. We look forward to seeing you back at Buffalo Wild Wings soon. We're brought to you today by Green State Credit Union. Green State Credit Union is with you during these times of uncertainty. Membership is open to all Iowans, so visit greenstate.org, greenstate.org, and learn more about ways we can be of service to you. Green State Credit Union, a proud supporter of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Hawkeye football coach Kirk Ferentz had hoped for a better fate for his team this week, perhaps delay the schedule by 30 days. It was not to be. I have full faith and trust that it's the right decision to, uh, to make. You know, the presidents and chancellors had access to information that uh, probably goes well beyond our, our scope. Um, but... All that being said, you know, the, the bottom line is the number one emotion. I think it's just disappointing that the players have really done a great job, I think, of handling uh, very tough circumstances going back to, to mid-March and uh, particularly the last couple of months with them being here and especially over the last three weeks where we've had a chance to be on the field with the players daily and, you know, just watch them work, watch their attitude and, uh, you know, really get a feel for where they're at. I, I can't compliment them enough about uh, just the way they've done things. They've, they've had a great attitude. They've worked hard. They've been together and, um, you know, just have really handled the uh, challenges of this this time, I think, really well. Not only when they're with us, but uh, maybe more importantly, when they're out of the building as well. And that was going to be a big component moving forward to, to have success. So just uh, I'm very complimentary of our players. And, you know, so that being said, certainly now? very disappointed for them. Can't recall a year for everybody, but most of the players are they're the ones that work the hardest. And the word from they're the NCAA ones that look so forward to, to you know, having a chance to be out there on the field for workouts, practice, what is permissible uh, in the going meantime, forward on this new of territory, new ice we're breaking here. But how, how much interaction can you have, can the coaches have with the players in terms of meetings, film sessions? I mean, will they continue to strength and condition? Will they continue to work out? Can you can you still meet with them? Yeah, I'm a little fuzzy on that right now, and I, I think really by definition we probably could still practice. I think. Uh, don't quote me on that, but um, that that was the reason we decided to to hold on uh, uh, Monday morning. I'm losing track of my dates here. Monday morning, and then also Tuesday morning, 
just just learning that uh, it sounded like at best we were going to delay. And, and my concern was I don't want to put our players at risk on the practice field if, if in fact we were not going to play at all. And then certainly um, didn't didn't feel like you know I think you know, these guys have been real, working really hard and they've uh, we've been together a lot. I think twelve workouts together up until Monday. So I, I just felt like if there was going to be a delay. Probably the healthiest thing for him right now would be take a break, and that, that's what we've encouraged uh, the guys to do with the news of yesterday. We just encouraged them to, you know, take some time if they have an opportunity to go home, do that, capitalize on that, because really nobody's been able to leave campus since they came back in early June, and uh, there aren't going to be a lot of windows moving forward uh, necessarily. So uh, we wanted to give them that opportunity. So we just uh, put a pause on everything and. Uh, we'll have the weight room open next week, but but it's only uh, if guys want to come in, that will be available to them. And then when we get back in on campus on August 24th, we'll we'll regroup and figure out what a, what a smart path is moving forward. But I think uh, I felt this way. You know, this is the first time we had six weeks where as coaches we could be with the players. Typically, it's four weeks. Uh, and so going back a couple of weeks here, my, my concern was let's not – overdo it because what we didn't want to do is have a stale team going into the season. So I think right now it's a good chance for everybody just to regroup, um, you know, handle this disappointment, but also just kind of regroup, recharge, and if they have a chance to be with their families, great. And, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll refocus once we uh, start class here. How much validity, Kirk, was there to the rumor that, or the story I saw it uh, online and I can't remember where else, but, that Iowa and Nebraska were considering uh, uh, moving to another league for for a fall season. Well, you know that that could be. I, I'm not aware of it. Uh, I, I do know this, and I can't speak for any school outside of Iowa. But uh, I'm a, I'm very appreciative um, as a football coach that uh, I do know Gary Bard and I know President Harold. Uh, both were advocating. Um, I think they they advocated strongly. That, that we consider, you know, just delaying, uh, you know, the season right now, put a pause on it. And I think that was, you know, when, when the uh, new schedule came out a week ago, that was one of the features I think that was built in that uh, seemed attractive to everybody. We had the ability to, to even push it as far back as the first week of uh, October. But, but again, uh, I'm, I'm not privileged to all the information that was shared. And I know a lot of that came from the medical experts and, uh, you know, I think, there just wasn't enough that uh, it was the right decision to play this fall. And uh, so, you know, we've got to respect that decision. You know, I think it goes without saying every all 12 or excuse me, 14 uh, coaches, all 14 teams, you know, most importantly, the players, they want to, they want to push forward and compete and play. And they've already demonstrated that, but, you know, this is a decision made by uh, um, you know, the leaders of our conference. And I think, you know, their first and foremost concern is just the health and well-being of the students involved here. So that, that's what it really comes down to. But I'm, I'm not aware of any discussion of us breaking off or, you know, going our own separate way. And I think, you know, one thing about being in a conference, I think, you know, uh, you know when, you, when you're in a conference and it's my 31st year uh, of association with the Big Ten, uh, I don't think there's a better conference going. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's uh, you know, just it was a conference decision. We're all going to we're all going to support it. We're all going to abide by it as far as I know. Lastly, Coach, uh, six months away till February, March. Uh, can you can you picture uh, a spring football season? Uh, still pretty chilly. It could be chilly in Iowa at that time of the year. <laughs> well, it could be chilly in, uh, in December and November, too. We've had a few of those. So, um, you know, I, I find it interesting. I, I can share this with you. Um, I don't know how many calls as coaches we've been on with the athletic directors. Uh, you know, we do a lot of joint meetings and, uh, it's in double digits. I mean, we've had a lot of meetings together and, and really there's been very little discussion about spring football, you know, maybe back like in April that was talked about the, um, the last several months there, all the focus and investments been on, Hey, how can we make this go this year? What's the best path, smartest path. So, you know, we, we haven't uh, spent much time talking about it. Uh, and we will now, obviously we'll shift our focus to that. Uh, but I have heard uh, some quote unquote experts saying, you know, you can't do it. Uh, I, I don't think that's, you know, I think that's a loser's attitude to me personally. And um, I think you can do anything you want if you, if you put your mind to it and uh, give it good thought. And I think that's, that's really what our attention and focus needs to uh, shift to right now. And uh, yeah, I think there's, there's totally a way to do it. Yeah, maybe some uh, won't be uh, necessarily great weather, 
Um, but it may be too. You never know in the spring. But I, I think there's a way to play a schedule, and I think probably the key component from my vantage point would be you have to look at it spring and fall and figure out what makes sense, uh, those two uh, things, components in, in combination. Now, obviously, the other, other thing is that, you know, our training is going to be very different next summer uh, if we do play a spring schedule. So, you know, not, I mean, nothing about this will look, look like it has, but you know, we've been telling our team that for the last couple of weeks, uh, actually a couple of months, that uh, to compare anything we're going through right now to what, you know, previous August looked like or previous July's, uh, you can't do that because there's just nothing that's uh, uh, remotely similar to what we've gone through certainly in the last 21 years here. So uh, this is going to be another chapter, a new chapter. And, uh, you know, the good news is I think we've got a lot of good minds and I'll put our heads together. Uh, and I say we, the presidents, the athletic directors, coaches, and try to map out a plan that's going to work. And, you know, it won't be the same. It's not going to be a 12-game schedule, I'm sure. But, um, you know, playing any kind of schedule in my mind would be better than not playing. So I think that's that's where our focus has to shift now. Appreciate your candor, Coach, uh, as always. And, uh We'll stay in touch this fall. Uh, Thanks so much for your time. Well, I'll miss our uh, Friday meetings and, uh, more importantly, the Saturday broadcast. But uh, there's a lot of things, you know, that aren't the same, not only in football, but just our lives in general. So we'll all, you know, shift gears. We'll find a way to make it work. So what now? Kirk Ferentz can't recall a year in his life without football in the fall. He and his staff await word from the NCAA as to what's permissible where workouts, practice, and recruiting are concerned. In the meantime, they'll hold plenty of meetings, watch a lot of tape, and play with kids and grandkids. The head hawk promised he wouldn't take up golf, but coin and stamp collecting were still on the table. I'll be back to wrap up this week's show after a word from our terrific sponsors. More Fight for Iowa after this. Fight for Iowa is brought to you by Quickstar. Quickstar is committed to serving our communities and ensuring access to all essentials during these challenging times. They'll continue to provide fresh milk, bread, eggs, butter, and more, as well as your hot food favorites, including pizza. Quickstar's got you covered when you want to get in and out quickly and safely back home. Thank you, Quickstar. Today, your internet connection is more important than ever. Extreme, powered by Mediacom, has the speed you need with 99.9% network reliability. Atlantic Coca-Cola Bottling Company is proud to support the local communities in which we live, work, and play. Every day, Atlantic Coca-Cola Bottling Trucks continue to help the food and beverage supply chain by delivering products to retail outlets, and those restaurants providing carryout and delivery services. We know Iowans are resilient, and together we are stronger. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. The only wave coming out of Kinnick Stadium is the goodbye to the Hawkeye football season, at least until the spring of 2021. From the kids at Stead Family Children's Hospital, to the restaurants, hotels, concession stand workers, parking attendants, convenience stores, shopping centers, and the goodwill interaction of tailgating. The painful reach of this pandemic is far and wide. It's in that vein that I recall a Winston Churchill quote in the dark days of World War II with the Luftwaffe nighttime bombing devastation of London. The gritty prime minister said, if you're going through hell, keep going. And so it is onward. That's this week's Fight for Iowa. Thanks for listening. I'm Gary Dolphin.